Okay, so perfect. Perfect. Okay, so good evening, uh, Maureen and Tassidy. You're kind of going to get the personalized uh, yeah. presentation today. Uh, Karina, Al, thanks very much for hosting today. It's always good to see you both. So, um, firstly, my name is Jake Fiddler. I'm a student recruitment advisor at Kaplan University. Uh, I've been in the role for a little over two and a half years, been at the university for about four total. Um, I really love what I do first and foremost because I really enjoy helping students find that ideal program that's a right fit for them and then onwards to perhaps getting that, that dream career that they're after. And, and some things that you may not, something that you may not know about me is that I used to be a student at the university as well back when I was at college many, many years ago. So um, I'm in the unique position of being able to speak to you, Dave, not only from the perspective of a CAPUT member, um, but as a former student as well. So before we really dive in, uh, I just have a quick video to show you called Rise to the Challenge, which will hopefully uh, maybe inspire you a little bit uh, to get your application to the university. So I'll just cue this up here. Maybe you're here, here, or even here. And you've definitely watched the world go by from here. Now you've got that feeling, the feeling of wanting to do more. to challenge yourself. Here, you'll get a customized learning experience as a participant, not a spectator. You'll be mentored by experts. They might even hire you one day. Really? Yep. And instead of seeing problems, you'll start shining a light on possibilities. Working night and day won't even seem like work at all. Right. So make your mark on the community, your city, or even the world. Why not? And why not you? Are you ready to rise to the challenge? Excellent. So why choose Kaplan University? There are really a few reasons why you should think about us um, as your university of choice. Um, one is we are a teaching-based institution as opposed to a research-based institution. The main difference there is that a research-based institution, uh, the main aim of their instructors is really to conduct research, um, apparent, obviously, as opposed to a teaching-based institution where the main aim of our instructors is to impart a top quality education uh, to their students. So for example, you're never gonna find a TA or a graduate student in our classrooms grading your second, third, and fourth year papers. Um, we do have the smaller class sizes at the university as well. Average class size is 25 to 27 students. So what that means is you're going to be a lot less anonymous when you're in class with us. Teachers are going to know your name. You're never going to wander into one of those big 300, 400 person lecture halls that I know can be a bit daunting for some students. So what we really offer is a nice transition from high school life into post-secondary life. We, like to, we really like to promote experiential learning. Uh, one way we do that is through the use of hands-on projects and other assignments that you've become familiarized with. Another is through our instructors themselves who are all experts in their fields of study and come to us for several years of job experience, but they're more than happy to impart to those students that ask them about it. And lastly, through the use of work, of work co-ops and practicums. Some fast facts. So we do have a student enrollment of about 95, 9,600 students. Um, each of them enrolled in one of our 90 plus programs that is inclusive of 14 bachelor degree programs as well. And I think perhaps an underrated stat um, is that 95% of our alumni are currently satisfied with their level of education. So a lot of our graduates are excited to come out of there and really hit the workforce. Um, this is, these are our, this is our program page. It does mirror what's in kind of the centerfold section of our viewbook, which is which you can download in the chat, but there are five faculties that you can choose from. Uh, I'll kind of go through them one by one for you and give you kind of a list of highlights that I think um, are in each. So the first is our faculty of arts and sciences. So the arts is made up of the school of humanities, which is things like English, art history, philosophy, your languages are in there. Our school of social sciences are the ologies. So that's your criminology, your psychology and your sociology. 
Um, and then in terms of highlights, we do offer a Bachelor of Arts uh, with a major in interdisciplinary studies. So that's where students will earn credits from across the humanities and social sciences, as well as uh, the science, uh, as well as science as well. Um, we do offer um, our, a STEM program as well. We do have our two year associate of science degree. Um, it is offered with the biology pathway. Uh, and I always like to hype kind of our engineering programs too. We do offer a engineering certificate, which is a one year program. The other side of that is the engineering transition diploma, which is a two year program. Both of those transfer into second year engineering over at UBC and UVic as well. Um, our Faculty of Business and Professional Studies um, does contain our four-year Bachelor of Business Administration degree. That is a four-year program. One of the cool things about this one is going between years two and three, a student is allowed to pick a concentration, uh, which is really just CAPU's version of majors and minors. So they can range anywhere from um, financial planning, human resources, international business, accounting, and marketing. I think that's all of them. Um, CAPU is also the only institution in Western Canada that offers a paralegal degree, which is a four and a half year program. Cool thing about this one, there's a practicum component in there too. So you're actually placed in a law firm in downtown Vancouver, learning the business uh, in order to graduate from the paralegal program. So um, anybody interested in working in that kind of arena, highly recommend looking at it, even if you also have plans on becoming a lawyer as well. Um, the paralegal is a good program to get into. And in fact, if you are accepted to law school, that first year of your law school tutelage um, can be used towards that practical component in the paralegal degree. Um, education of Health and Human Development, um, that has our education degree, early childhood care and education degree to be a bit more specific. Um, it's offered with two different streams. Uh, one is for infant toddler, the other is for special needs, both of which do meet the requirements for the professional development program at SFU or UBC which is the credential that all teachers need in order to teach elementary school um, at that level. Um, I also like to promote our music therapy degree, which is a four-year program. Um, I'll lead off by saying that there is no direct entry into this program, but students can start in the music department, do two years and then ladder into the third year of the music therapy program. What you're gonna learn there is all about harnessing the power of music as a transformative agent. Um, to use towards helping people, um, and uh, you're gonna to use towards helping people fix certain ailments. So that can range anywhere from autism in young children, um, all the way to dementia uh, in the elderly. There's a practicum in there too, where you'll get a chance to actually implement your own treatment programs. Um, Fine applied arts, um, I think most people uh, through one way or another really love film. Um, and really love movies. Um, if you really wanna know how, you know, your favorite movies get made, I recommend taking a good hard look at our Bachelor of Motion Picture Arts degree, which is a four-year program where you can learn all the fundamentals about movie making. So everything from producing, directing, sound writing, screen design, sound writing, uh, screen design, uh, music, des producing, directing, sound writing, screen design. Um, and we even teach you how to network within the industry itself. Uh, a little bit. So we give you that practicum component in there too. Um, our animation department is located under our faculty of fine applied arts too. Um, 2D is all about learning classic design, uh, drawing and animation techniques. Um, I always like to mention a gentleman named Benson Shum, who's one of our great success stories. He came out of the 2D program. He's actually working for Disney off full time, part of the Oscar winning team that worked on movies like Frozen and Moana who everybody has seen. So you can always go online, Google him. He makes his portfolio publicly available if you wanna check out all the cool things that he's been working on. 3D animation is our gaming diploma. Uh, if anybody's thinking about turning video gaming from a hobby into a possible career, take a look at the 3D. Um, that's all about bringing 3D models and images to life uh, on your computer screen. Um, a lot of big gaming firms in Vancouver take from this graduate pool. So EA Games, Rockstar Vancouver. Um, have a tendency to hire a lot of our 3D graduates. Um, and then finishing off, finishing things off with our faculty of global and community studies. Um, obviously tourism is a huge money earner in the province, uh, bringing in you know, billions and billions of dollars each year. So naturally we need fresh new talent to keep that wheel of economy turning. Our Bachelor of Tourism Management is offered two different streams. 
Uh, one is adventure stream. If you're thinking about um, the sightseeing industry, even the airline field industry, um, that's the stream you want to go down to. The other side uh, of that is the hospitality sector. So students coming out of that stream will usually get involved in the hotel uh, arena, start from the bottom and kind of work their way up from there. Uh, we also have our uh, outdoor recreation diploma, which is a two-year program that offers certification in winter water and mountain backpacking. Um, and one of the great, one of the perks with that program is, you know, you're really not spending a lot of time in the classroom there. You're all taking hikes up in Whistler or, you know, you're off in a kayak over in Tofino somewhere. <laughs> so that's, um, if you like the outdoors, if you're passionate about being outside, this is the program you definitely want to take a look at. Um, financial aid awards. So um, we have closed for entrance awards for this year, but they will open up again uh, for those starting in fall 2022 on October 15th, and they'll run through until March 1st, 2022. In terms of value, they do range anywhere from $500 all the way up to $56,000 for some lucky CapEx scholarship winners out there. So depending on your program, that could potentially mean a full ride. Um, in terms of qualifications, a lot of them are academic based, but that's not the entire story. Um, things like extracurricular activities and volunteer experience all factor in, in terms of a complete application for our entrance awards. Uh, we do still currently have smaller term-based awards that you can apply for. If anybody's starting the fall, they run from July 5th, which is the course registration start date through to about the ad drop deadline, which is around the third week of September or so. Student loans are held to the province student aid BC, so you can go there if you wanna know more about that. Um, and if you would like further information about our own entrance awards or term awards, um, you can contact our financial aid department through the link you see on the slide there. So applications, applying to CAPU is very easy to do. And at its core, it really involves three steps. So the first step is applying through Education Planner of BC, which handles the applications for all of the universities, <laughs> uh, most of the universities, I should say, within the province. The second step you want to undertake is submit your supporting documentation, which you can upload directly to EPBC. For grade 12 students, this is going to be either your final grade 11 grades um, or your proof of grade 12 grades. And on the basis of that, you'll be granted conditional acceptance into the program of your choice. The last step you want to take under the step, the second, after the second point, within the second point here, is you want to make sure to use the student transcript service, the STS service through the Ministry of Education website so that you give CAPU permission to pull down your final grades when you read your last final exam in June. Now, we're looking to incorporate the XML transcript process um, it hasn't been formalized by our admissions department yet, but that will be forthcoming. So um, my advice is keep in close contact with your grade 12 counselor because we'll be updating him or her um, in the coming weeks um, through the e-newsletter. So you can certainly direct all questions towards that individual. Uh, and then step three, uh, you wanna register for your classes and pay your tuition. For fall start dates, course registration is gonna start on July 5th. Uh, fee payment deadline is August 24th. Um, applications for most of our programs um, are still open right now uh, for the fall and they will remain open until August 3rd. Um, if I'm talking to, grade any to any grade 11s here, applications for fall 22 <laughs> will reopen again uh, in early October this year. And then once again, that cycle will run through uh, all the way to August next year. Um, if you know what CAPU program you're interested in, I always highly stress that you should get your application in early uh, for reasons such as you don't wanna miss important deadlines, you wanna be eligible uh, for entrance awards, uh, and you'll also have a chance to receive one of our fantastic new admission packages, which went out to I think the first um, 1,700 um, approved applicants this year, and we keep approving upon it. So it was actually really neat. Um, here's what the STS uh, page looks like. So this is through the Ministry of Education site. It's where you're gonna go uh, to give CAPU permission to pull down those final grades, um, as I mentioned uh, a couple slides ago. 
And don't forget any questions you can direct towards your grade 12 counselor. Um, he or she should be very well informed of this process as well as any changes that will be, be forthcoming uh, from our own admissions department. Um, COVID-19, so this is kind of an important slide that's certainly um, you know, a shock that we have to mention it, but it's, it's important to know. Um, so on March 8th, um, our Dr. Bonnie Henry, our provincial health officer, advised that BC public post-secondary institutions can plan for a return to on-campus activities in the fall uh, 2021, stating that it's, quote, imperative to get back onto campus for everyone's health and well-being. So um, at our level, we are currently planning our strategies around a full welcoming back of students into our classrooms um, in September. Um, it's important to note that your safety um, is our top priority uh, as we plan around this. Um, so, you know, we are washing down everything. Social distancing will be in place, face masks, you know, the whole kind of kit and caboodle. So, um, Safety is, once again, your, our number one priority going into welcoming students back uh, in September. Um, you can stay abreast of our complete COVID-19 response um, through our homepage. So if you go to our homepage, there's a little COVID-19 link at the top. It's updated pretty much on a daily basis. So that's how you can stay updated with everything, um, you know, vis-a-vis -vis courses in the fall and then even past that. Uh, and jumpstart. So if anybody has been conditionally accepted um, to the university, I highly recommend that you sign up for our jumpstart event, uh, which is running on May 1st this year. This is a great way to be introduced with the next, the next steps that are involved for you as a student. It'll also be a good opportunity uh, for you to learn more about the services that are available to you, such as financial aid, student loans, academic advising, and other services. Um, you'll also have a chance to connect with current and future students. You'll get to know um, our campus a little bit. Uh, and then, as I said, figure out what your next steps are as a CAPU student. Um, and you can also, as a last point, have a chance to engage with our faculty through informative Q&A sessions as part of this event too. Something we run every year. Um, it's, you, it's students really appreciate it. Um, it's very informative um, and worth checking out. Um, your parents can come too. Uh, there is a parent orientation that's attached to this Jumpstart event. Um, it's good for them to come because it tells them all the ways that they can support their son or daughter um, as they kind of begin their academic journey with us. Um, and then lastly, here is our contact page. Um, you can phone us at the phone number you see there, although I do recommend emailing us, uh, being that all student recruitment advisors at CAPU are currently working remotely, so email. Um, is the best way to get a hold of us right now. Uh, and you can do that through recruitment at capitalnu.ca. You can follow us on Instagram at capitalnu, or sorry, at capufuture. Um, and you can also subscribe to our new digital magazine at capsule.stories, where you can get uh, some insight um, about what student life is like uh, on campus and all the, see all the cool things that our students and faculty uh, are working on right now. Uh, and that's it for me. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I apologize if I was a little rusty. It's been a while since I've given a presentation like this. Um, but and now I'll open the floor if anybody has any questions. I know uh, Tessidy and Marini kind of did in the beginning, but um, if you do after the presentation, please feel free to kind of fire away. Thank you, Jake. I, um, I didn't end up introducing you. <laughs> Oh, that's okay. I took I took the reins on that one. For you. Oh, I know it was good. We did this this the kind of waiting for people to show yeah. up, and, and yeah. uh, you took the reins. So anyway, thank you for coming. Yeah, everybody. it was my pleasure. Thanks for having and, me. I, I um, see we uh, David has joined us. Yeah. Um, so David, if you missed anything and and wanted me to go over anything, um, I can certainly do that for you. Um, or if you have any questions. Um, oh, yeah, well, Tessidy. So what are the admission requirements for the various programs? So great question. Um, mission requirements vary from program to program. So I'll kind of throw a question back at you, Tessidy. Um, is there a particular program or area of study 
that you're currently interested in, maybe thinking about in the fall?